Hey folks, Benny Blue here, coming at you with a special online banjo lesson, quarantine edition. Coming to you from beautiful coastal Maine. Though if you don't know me, I'm a folk musician in Rochester, New York. And typically throughout the week, I go around to a handful of banjo students' houses. We sit for an hour and we, uh, we work on some technical lesson or we might uh, learn a new tune. I teach at the Hochstein School of Music. I do a couple courses there a year, um, a beginner's course usually in the fall and an intermediate course usually in the spring. Uh, and every once in a while I'll do a one-off workshop at Bernanzio Uptown Music. Um, they're a great store. Uh, if you've never heard of them, check them out, bernanzio.com. And a uh, great resource for all things banjo. You can buy some really rare old banjos there, but also a ton of accessories, uh, strings and picks. Um, you can get a, an arm guard for your banjo like I should have so I don't rot my banjo head out with my arm sweat like I do repeatedly. Um, but yeah, check them out. And uh, also you can get in touch with me uh, by email at bennybluemusic at gmail.com. Uh, that blue is spelled the French way, though, like blue cheese, B-L-E-U. So bennybluemusic at gmail.com. Um, and also, uh, if you like what you saw today, if you got something out of it, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a tip uh, or a donation. I'll have a button here on my website uh, through which you can do that. And, um, well, yeah, let's get to the lesson, okay? So for these online lessons, what I'd like to do is kind of do a twofer each time. Um, we'll start off with some kind of technical lesson. Um, today I'm going to go over just a quick little exercise I do when I feel like I'm playing kind of sloppy. Um, just a quick exercise to help uh, forge that mind-body connection and kind of get your hands uh, working the way your ears want them to. And then we're going to learn a tune. Um, Willow Garden. We're going to learn it in the double C tuning, and uh, we're going. It's going to be in waltz time. Willow Garden. You, a lot of times people play uh, either in in two or in three, uh, so we're going to play it in three today. So today's technical lesson. Like I was saying, um, sometimes you might pick up your banjo, and you play for a few minutes, and you think, man, I'm sounding really crappy right now. I'm I'm flubbing things, and I'm just just sound generally sloppy. Um, or, or maybe the opposite, you'll find you go to a jam and by the end of the jam, you know, two, after you've been playing for two or three hours, you'll think, man, I'm so locked in. I feel the groove of my, my hand so well right now. And it just feels great because you had that really long warm up time. So to this little exercise is just a way to kind of speed that process up, um, I, sh I should state it's I don't I'm not teaching this as a an actual way to play the banjo musically. Um, this is really just an exercise to sort of get you in the flow. You'll see what I mean. What it involves is repeatedly going through this process for every note you play, um, where you you think about what to do, you do it, and you stop. Then you think about what's next, you do it, and you stop. And so it's, it's not musical at all. It's not how you would want to um, perform a piece or even really practice a tune. It's really just a good way to kind of get the juices flowing between your mind and your hands, your right hand and your left hand. Um, and, and so the easiest thing to start with would just be uh, the G major scale. And so what we're going to do is you'll, you'll repeatedly do this process where you play a note, you stop the note, you think about what to do next, and then you play that note, you stop it, think about what to do next. Normally you wouldn't be stopping all the notes. This is, again, just to kind of speed up this link um, between um, what your brain wants your hands to do and what your hands want to do. And so I'll go up the G major scale. And between every note, I'm going to stop, I'm going to move, and I'm going to do it again. Now, 
you still want to keep a beat going, even though you're stopping all the time. I'll try to tap my foot a little louder. I still am trying to keep a cadence moving. And ideally, you want each note to happen with a downstroke of your hand, like a bum or a did. Bum, did, bum, did, bum, did, bum, did. And every time you play it, you stop it, you move, stop it, move, stop it, move. There are a couple different ways that you can stop a note. If it's an open string, pretty much your only way is to just kind of uh, deaden the string. But if it's a fretted note, you can also just release the pressure. Um, and that's the part that's not musical. You, you don't normally want to stop your notes dead. But by just doing this practice, um, going through a few things, next I'm going to do it just quickly on a tune, um, just kind of going through that a few times, put your banjo down, walk away for a second, come back, more likely than not, you're not going to be uh, sloppy anymore and you'll be sounding a little more cohesive, um, which will help your practice go a little better. So here's an example of doing that same thing on a tune. Um, let's do Cripple Creek. I know all my students uh, have learned Cripple Creek and uh, we get it out of this awesome Wayne Erbson book. Uh, claw hammer banjo for the complete ignoramus um, me and my students really like this book and then if, if you get that book you should get Wayne's second book claw hammer banjo tunes tips and jamming um, just a ton of, of, of really um, easily laid out tunes uh, good tunes and then he also gives good tips for how to um, make the tunes a little more complicated as you get comfortable with them um, so here's Cripple Creek real fast. Here's what, what it sounds like. And so that same exercise we just did with the G major scale you can do with a tune like Cripple Creek. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll do the some pull-offs. If you're going to do pull-offs and hammer-ons, you want to, uh, if you're playing at such a slow tempo like this, you want to challenge yourself to really make that hammer-on and pull-off a true eighth note. Um, usually we're playing faster, It's easy to think about hammer-ons and pull-offs as just these really quick actions. You either do that or you do that. Um, but uh, at such a slow pace, you want to make sure that those are true eighth notes like this. B section. So again, this isn't how you would play a song uh, musically. You wouldn't you wouldn't show somebody, hey, look at this new way I learned how to play Cripple Creek. But um, you can just use it in your own practice. Do that for five minutes. Play a, a couple tunes like that. Play your scales like that. And you'll be surprised. You come back to your banjo and... And that kind of brain-hand link might feel a little stronger, hopefully. So let's get to this tune we're going to learn. We're going to learn Down in the Willow Garden. Um, I switched banjos. I'm in double C tuning right now. Uh, so if you uh, are not in double C tuning, pause the video and get there. Or uh, switch banjos if you're lucky enough to have another banjo.
there's a, a couple really good uh, recordings of this tune that I love. Uh, some people play it in two, two or four. Uh, like Roscoe Holcomb has a really cool um, version of it. Probably the oldest recording of it that I have. Um, uh, Raina Gellert and Susie Gehring do a really awesome version. Um, also in, in two. Um, but we're going to learn it in three today. Um, my biggest inspiration for the uh, waltz version is comes from Richie Stearns. He's recorded it both with Evil City String Band and Richie and Rosie. And that's what we're, how we're going to learn today is a waltz. So let's just quick uh, talk about playing a waltz time. Um, I know most of you guys have done it before. Instead of just your typical bum ditty rhythm... play bum diddy diddy so right now I'm, i just i'm double c tuning so i'm just pushing down the second fret on the first string um, to make our c chord and i'm bumming on our fourth string here the low c so we're just going to do bum diddy diddy bum diddy diddy one two three one two three bum diddy diddy bum This is just a good place to start with the waltz rhythm. When, when you get going, you can kind of feel it in different ways. A lot of times I find I leave out that first ditty and it's kind of more of a bum. You can leave out the second ditty. Bum, ditty. And by just, by, I'm not really leaving it out, I'm giving it space, I'm giving it that the, the ditty space, I just might not be voicing the actual strum. Um, so let me just play the tune through a couple times uh, to get it in your ear. So let's talk about the chords of the song first. Um, if, if, you, if it's helpful for you to write down the chords, now would be a good time to do it. But I don't want you to uh, look at your paper for too long. I, I think it's really good practice to get into um, picturing chord structures in your head. Um, it, it's, it's really not that hard. You kinda, it's just like kind of imagining a map. You, know? you have this map of where you are in space at any given time. If you're at your home, you kind of know the, the streets of your block without even thinking about it. You know that this street's over there and that street's over there. Or if you're walking down a block, you know really well. You, you could be thinking about something completely different, but you'd know what building was right here because you know you have this road map and you don't have to look at the map. You kind of have it in your head. And so as you're playing a song, you can always just kind of default back to this road map of where you are in your head. So it really helps to kind of build whatever, however it works for you. I bet different uh, 
chord maps are built different ways by different people. But the way I would think of this song is I'm going to break it down into four quarters of each section. There's an A section, there's a B section. Each section has these four quarters, which are made up of four bars. Now, another thing I don't want you to do is, is to count and think like, okay, there's three C chords and then an F chord. I um, mean, that is what you'll think, but but it's not it's not so much counting it through, more of just kind of like calling up this sequence and then abiding by it. Um, and it all happens pretty subconsciously. So obviously at the, at the front end, when you're learning a song, you have to put in some pretty active learning time where it's not in the background of your head yet. You have to learn it. Once it's learned, though, the idea is you want to get to the point where you, you have this chord structure just there to, to, to base everything else you're doing in. Um, and so, like I said, it, it, I think of this tune as four quarters of each section. So in the A section, the first quarter of it, four bars, four bum diddy ditties, is C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, F diddy diddy. That's the first quarter of the A section. C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, F diddy diddy. Okay? Let's just play that a couple times. C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, F diddy diddy. Again. C Okay, so now let's go on to the next quarter. C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, minor diddy diddy, minor diddy. C, C, A minor, A minor. Okay, so let's do that whole first half together. It goes C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, F diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, C diddy diddy, A minor diddy, A minor diddy diddy. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy, F, then C, C, A minor. C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy, F. Hey, what just happened there? We just played the third quarter, and it was identical to the first quarter, right? It's folk music, man. You get a lot of repetition. It's kind of like, like um, if you think of these little quarter sections as sentences or phrases, you just kind of have to speak this phrase, then you speak this phrase, oh, then you speak this phrase again. Um, when it's all written out on a page, it can look kind of complicated and look like there's more there than there actually is. But the third quarter is the same as the first quarter. And then the last quarter is C... G, C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy. So it goes C, G, C, C. Okay, so the whole structure is one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, C, two, three, C, two, three, F, two, three, C, two, three, C, two, three, A minor, A minor, back to C. That's the whole A section. Now the B section is identical to the A section in this particular song. However, the very first two chords, instead of being C's, you're going to play F. So that first quarter, instead of being C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy, C, diddy, diddy, F, you're going to start on the F. So it's going to be F, diddy, diddy, F, diddy, diddy, C, but then back to F. Right? So if in the, in the A section it goes C, 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 F, in the B section that one quarter goes F, F, C, F. You're just replacing those first two C's with F chords. And then the rest of the B section is identical to the A section. It's really beautiful. It sounds like uh, the song has such a lift to go into the B section, but really it's just those two chords that are different. Everything else stays the same. So the whole song, one, two, three. Back.
the second quarter. C, two, three, C. Now this is just like the original third, third quarter. It goes C, 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 F. Let's do it again. I'll just call the chords. C, 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 F, C, C, A minor, A minor, C, 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 F, C, G, C, C, and now F, F, C. So now, once you get good at kind of knowing that road map, now it's time to start thinking melodically. And it might take you a while, you know. The beautiful thing about this video is that you can go repeat that, that uh, what I just did there over and over until you really feel comfortable about these chords. And just as important as tuning into where your hands go, remembering like, okay, now I have to go to that F chord shape. Pay attention also to what your ear hears when you do that, so that your ear knows what these chord changes sound like. Your ear will know, oh, no, no, we're not going to go to an F there. It's got to go to that minor sound. That's what my ear knows is going to come here, is a minor sound. Because your ear can um, augment your memory a lot. Sure, you're supposed to remember this road map, but your ear, every, every, every moment that you're moving through that road map, your ear is knows where it wants to go um, so so tap into that listen to your ear pay attention to where your ear wants you to go um, so melodically um, I'm not gonna go over every little move here I'm, I'm gonna give you a good view of what I'm doing so that you can uh, loop it and I'm also gonna add some fiddle to it so that you can um, play the fiddle or play the banjo along to the fiddle So I'm going to play through Willow Garden six times. The first two times, just the banjo. The middle two times, banjo and fiddle together. And the last two times, just fiddle for you to play along with.
hope you enjoyed playing Willow Garden with me. Um, if there were any parts that uh, you couldn't figure out or it employs a technique that you haven't learned yet, um, listen, to, listen with your ears. Trust your ears and, and listen to it a few times and then do your best to try to figure out something that you would do that sounds like what I did. Um, there's no right or wrong way to play this stuff. Uh, it's up to you. And, and that what I just played was my interpretation after playing it for years, after trying to learn it verbatim from someone else. Um, so it, 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 it all just kind of evolves over time. And so if you come up with a different way to do it than me, that's great. Um, anyway, this was my online banjo lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to email me. Benny Blue Music at gmail.com. B L E U Benny Blue Music at gmail.com. And um, we'll see you next time. Feel free to throw a couple dimes in the tip jar here, the virtual tip jar. I hope you're staying safe. See you soon.